everyone, it's Donna Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, I got up, um, oh, probably about 7 o'clock, feeling pretty rested. I woke up on my own, and then I got dressed, and I heard the picker outside, so I took a picture of the picker picking the grapes. I'm going to put that in right here. Can you see the paddles in between? That's neat. And the grapes, when they go down the row, he must be fixing that row that's dragging. And they pick out um, snakes, believe it or not, and spiders and leaves out of the bin. See the guy over there doing that? And uh, they're waiting to go down the row. If the grapevines are drooping, they have to have somebody pick them up they can travel. And down the row they go and those paddles will start. And the grapes go in. They're going into this other wagon. And down they go. And there's the big truck down there that they load the bins on. Once the bins are full, they load them up on that semi-truck. Then the semi-truck takes them to the grape harvesting plants. It may be in our area, it may be far away, it depends. They're all over the place. The Welch juice is made in Westfield, New York, and um, that's where the Welch plant is. So if you buy Welch's grape jam or jelly, or juice, that's where it's made. It's made in Westfield, New York. They um, started picking the grapes and um, we noticed when we were riding back home that there was a lot of grapes that hadn't been picked yet. So I don't know. Today's a nice warm day so they should get a good sugar con count. The um, temperature is where I could sit outside in the sunshine. I like to sit in the sun, but it's got to be warm enough and the wind's got to not be a, a real, real brisk, cold air cutting through you. I did have on a heavy sweater, but it was warm enough to sit out in the sun and enjoy the warm. The dog always goes out with me and he sits right by me. And when I come back in, he comes back in. And then when I go back out, he goes back out. The um, chickens are doing really good. They seem to be, they don't notice that the rooster's gone, I don't believe. He went to my brother's house. I had a question about, um, someone wanted to know if it was best to get the rooster when it was dark. Chickens can't see in the dark. So when it's getting kind of dusky out, they all go into their house and they sit on their roost and um, it's easy to catch them when they're in the, in, in the sleep, when it's dark. So um, what we what some people do is they sometimes sometimes they have a red red light that you can point on them and it doesn't disturb them. Well, I don't have a red light, so I had to point it to the ground. And the rooster was watching me while my brother went behind, and he could grab the rooster. And they make a terrible noise when they're when they're caught, and then it calms down real quick. Um, and he put it in his in his little carrier to take it to his house, and that that rooster will get to free range, really free range. There's no fences over there, so he can just wander the yard. And he does have some hens, but the hens are in an area where the rooster can't get to, so his hens are fine. Mine, if I let him out wandering the yard, he would fly over the fence and be right back in there with the girls. Well, I was waiting for Jim to come home from work. He still isn't home from work. He went in this morning about 5 o'clock, and it's almost 5 o'clock now in the evening. And um, I'm going to cook. In fact, it is, it's in the sous vide right now. The ham Jim got home, and I have a little bit of a clip that I took of the meat in the frying pan. I did it in the frying pan. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. I do have a cast iron griddle that I can put on the burners with the gas stove, and it would it would be like you did it out on the grill, but I decided to use the cast iron frying pan instead. 
And so I'm going to insert that little clip right at this point. Well, Jim has finally gotten home. We're going to eat. Let me show you. This is this is um, the, the pork steak that was sent. Isn't it delicious looking? Look at how huge it is. And it's really thick. This is going to be a tasty treat. Let me show you what time it is. Look at the time. We're eating awfully late. And he's got to go in tomorrow for 5 o'clock. Not a good thing. I want to say that it was the most delicious piece of steak, ham, ham steak. I guess you'd call it ham steak, pork steak, I don't know, ham steak, that we've had. I'd have to read the label, what it said, to call it by its proper name. Are you going to look at it? You might be able to find it. But anyways, it was so good, Thomas. We ate the whole thing. I cut it down the middle, gave Jim half, and I had half. What's it say? It says, uh, pork smoked ham not fully cooked well it was fully cooked when i cooked it <laughs> i cooked it in the the way i did it was and it was so tender we have this sous vide cooker that my son got us for christmas and um when i want to cook a piece of meat i will put it in there and let it cook and this one cooked i had it cook actually i cooked it for an hour and then i decided oh maybe jim needs he won't be coming so i flipped it over and did it for another hour. So it actually cooked two hours in the sous vide cooker. And then when he got, I had just put it in the refrigerator when he walks through the door, because I decided, well, I guess we're not having it tonight. We're gonna have to have it tomorrow. But we, he came home just, just, I had just put it in, it was still warm. So I took it back out and I asked him if he wanted to eat and he did. And so I fried it in the, um, cast iron frying pan and it was it was I did that only just to give it some color it was so tender so juicy so good it can't ask for better and um, I want to tell you um, Tom's channel I had to look it up Tom I'm so bad with channels I could tell if it was just your name that would be fine with me because then I have to remember the rest of it but it's Thomas Schmidt homestead projects and it's Tom and Don that gave us the ham steak it was really really good now in a day or two I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna do the I gotta cook the peanuts yet I'm gonna have to boil them and I will do that I think when I know there's a few extra kids in the house because there's an awful lot of peanuts Bob from Mountain Crest Farms, you sent an awful lot of peanuts. I'm going to have to share them with the kids when I cook them because it's a lot. And, and you know, I, I'm not a real snacky person, but maybe pe they say peanuts are addictive. So maybe I'll eat a lot more than I'm supposed to. I don't know. I hope not. But I will wait till the kids are here because if the kids are here, that would be... Um, probably six or seven, seven kids, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven people <laughs> extra that will help dwindle the peanuts down. And they they will enjoy. They will get to see what it's like to have boiled peanuts. Okay. I believe that is it for today. I did watch, watch Rhonda's, Rhonda's Jones channel today. I was watching her because she was talking about three days. She goes three days on carnivore and then she had a bunch of um, foods that she eats and there was like seven choices that she gave and then she said then she gave some other foods that help her to um, stay on the plan. And so I wrote it down. I actually played it twice because I had to play a little bit, pause a little bit so I could write. And so this way I could write it. I like it when they put stuff in the in the description so then I can copy and paste and I put it into um, open office and then I print it out on the printer and it saves me the time of handwriting because sometimes my handwriting is so bad that I can't even read it. But this I wrote pretty good. I can read it. So 
that's it for today. I hope you all had a great day, and I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.